A letter of apology from myself, Brock Turner's victim, and any woman who's ever survived sexual assault. I'm sorry. No, truly, I am. I'm sorry for so many things to so many people through so many times, but most of all, I'm sorry I believe these lies. I guess it should come as no surprise that the right to my body is a social disguise based on the notion that a man has a right to anything in his eyes from my thighs to my hair and no, not my dreads, but the ones down there as long as my skirt was short enough to invite him to stare. So, I'm sorry. I apologize for this disguise that I put on, but I'm so glad you knew it was meant to turn you on because the clothes that I wear have no significance to me as a human being. Rather, they're meant for you to define me by what you're seeing. Believing my hemline determines my inner being. I invite you to, I invite you to look down upon me while I suffocate beneath this glass ceiling, so forgive me. Forgive me, please, for not getting the memo that if I drink a little bit too much, I go from being a woman to a hoe. For forgetting that if I sip drinks, then liquor shouldn't be the only thing I expect down my throat because if I'm not really asking for it, then he really won't. Now I'm not sure if my apology is coming off entirely too sincerely, so let me take a minute to break it down for, for y'all a little bit more clearly. This apology is a symptom of a social disease seen from football rosters in Ohio to buses in New Delhi with outbreaks of slut shaming and victim blaming mentalities and no cure in sight under this current system of patriarchy. We've got invisible wars leaving visible scars on members of our nation's military. And don't get me started on what the hell is going on politically. See, I'd write my local politician, but he's probably taken the lead on defining rape in terms of words such as legitimacy. In fact, the following is a list of exact quotations taken from politicians in the United States of America. Rape victims should make the most of a bad situation. Rick Santorum, former presidential hopeful. Some girls rape easy. Roger Rivard, former Wisconsin congressman. Rape is like bad weather. If it's inevitable, you should relax and enjoy it. Clayton Williams, former contender for Texas governor. See, this disease has reached the top of our nation's leadership to the point of being endemic. But even without a medical degree, I've got a four-step regimen that's sure to end it. Number one, remember rape is not about sex. It's about power and privilege. And if you don't believe me, take a detour into our nation's prison systems. Number two, don't teach women self-defense, modest dress, or other ways to avoid being raped initially. Instead, why not foster a culture that teaches men not to rape indiscriminately? Number three, if the case makes it to court, I've got advice for those on the bench. Perceptions of character are not as important as evidence. And number four, if a person is raped, look for the rapist and not the reason. That one shouldn't have to rhyme.